Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this one, I am super, super, super excited because we are quite possibly reviving a class that just died off after the 90s or early 2000s, and I'm not really sure why, because it's really freaking cool. Ta-da! Check out this bad boy. So this really cool build is possible by a combination of two things. It started off life as a TLR 22T 4.0, and then all thanks to the help of the brilliant conversion kit provided by Mr. Chad Parks. Thank you so much for sending this to me at Ignite RC. Then you get this. So this is a conversion of two different kits. TLR kit, conversion kit, Boom. Now you are of course going to need a couple other pieces and items to complete this build much like any other kit out there. I'll go ahead and run through what I have in this one so you guys know. And I'll link it all down below so that if you forget after I say it, you'll still be okay. Like I already mentioned, kit, Ignite conversion kit, and then we have a pair of Spectrum servos. We have a S6260 on our throttle application. And then we have a Spectrum S6250, the torque style servo for our steering. Inside the receiver box, we have a Sanwa receiver for our Sanwa M17. We also have a transponder in there, so we're ready to click off some super fast lap times. And then we will be powering this vehicle on and off with an electric style power switch. For the motor plant, we have a 0.12 OS motor. This particular version, I don't exactly know what it is, so check the link down below so you know which one it is. I just grabbed the one that Chad told me I needed and then I left it at that. Then he does have, from what I can tell, a pretty unique uh, header and pipe system that you can use on this truck. There may be some alternatives out there if you guys are super smart and can see if something lines up but I just went ahead and went with the system he has available on his website so it would fit and it'd be easy peasy, no problems there. This kit, as far as the TLR side of things is concerned, is completely box stock. I haven't upgraded to any 5.0 parts. I'm planning on doing that in the future, but it is a 4.0 through and through. My thoughts on this conversion kit, first and foremost, is that it is a very high quality product. The fit and finish of all the machined aluminum parts is phenomenal and the carbon fiber parts that he has in here as well are cut and very clean and have a nice gloss finish on them. Check out the bottom of this thing. I guess you could say the heart and soul of this starts with a completely new and custom chassis that you mount all of the TLR parts and his conversion kit on. Now, some of you OGs out there that had one of these nitro trucks back in the day, you may remember some applications where the receiver pack was just this nice little thing that hung off the back of the vehicle. Back then, that wasn't really very strange because we used to have rear motor cars and all our buggies and trucks. Now, you notice, it's still very much a 4.0 truck. No battery back here. This little carbon plate right here 
is hiding or it is the mount for a thin style receiver pack. So if you take off three screws down here on the bottom, it pops right out and then you can service charge whatever you need to do to your receiver pack. Pretty cool. As far as the build went for these two kits and bringing them together, I'm confident that if anyone takes their time and they have all the parts ready beforehand, that anyone can get through this build in the course of a weekend. If you've never built a kit before, I may suggest that you either have somebody else help you or you watch a lot of videos and do some research before you jump into something like this. Not that there's anything wrong with this conversion kit, I just think that the concept of building a kit as it was intended and then bringing a third party conversion into the mix, it may be confusing for somebody who's completely new to the hobby. However, someone like myself that has built dozens of these 22 style platforms, it really wasn't that difficult for me. I knew exactly how this, these front and rear clips were going to come off of the original chassis and then get mounted right up onto this new application. And it was exactly that simple. Took the front clip off of the old chassis, rear clip off, popped them right on. One thing that I thought was really cool about this, and it really showcases the high quality machine work that he has with these aluminum pieces, is this break disc slipper assembly that he incorporates to the TLR kit. This particular piece, I want to kind of put just a little note, like a builder's note next to, that I had to build it and take it apart probably three or four times before I built it correctly. It's a little hard to explain through a video if I'm not building it right now, but just take note that this is something that you may have to look at carefully. I think it may be one of those instances where you had quite the talented engineer develop this conversion kit, but some of the instructions are a little bit difficult to understand in a step-by-step -step manner. All of the indicators are there, how the parts go together, but the order that they go together is kind of left up to the builder to figure out or decide. You guys may breeze through it with no problem, and I wouldn't doubt that, but for somebody like myself, I'm not an expert engineer or an expert builder, I had to take my time on it and make sure that I got it right. So I encourage if you find yourself in the same place, you're not alone. <laughs> for reference, if it's helpful, I'll go ahead and give you a close up of how my assembly looks once it's completed. So if you find yourself building this kit and you're a little bit stumped, maybe this will help you. Aside from that piece, everything else went together super smooth, very easy to understand. The instructions are very clear as to what parts are going where, what size screws you're using, and it has a couple options built into the kit. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen one, but if you remember back in the day, there were things such as rotary style carbs, and he actually has this kit so that you can use one of those styles of motors should that be the one you're going to throw into your kit. His instructions show you which way to go with these little servo horns and connectors if you are going to use a slide style carb or a rotary style carb. This application here is a slide style carb in case you were wondering. That brings me to the last order of business when talking about this particular truck. Before I run it, we're gonna have to paint it. Now, I didn't paint it just yet because I thought it'd be kind of fun if you guys threw in some ideas for me down in the comments below. Yeah, I could do my traditional flames with the center section and the red in the back, like my classic paint scheme. I could even do that Ken Block style paint scheme that I've been using on my outdoor cars, but I kind of want to do something a little bit more vintage, something maybe from the days of old. Maybe the box art of like a double XT or something like that. Not really sure, nothing has really stuck with me just yet, but I'd love to hear what you guys think would look really cool on this Nitro Stadium truck. I'm sure there's a lot of good ideas out there. Man, I really hope that this class takes off. Right now, it's a little bit of a unconventional build, maybe for just the enthusiast side of our hobby, but I think if there's enough of a following, we might start to see these classes make a resurgence at our outdoor tracks. If you find yourself at an indoor dirt track, I'm not exactly sure if all of them are going to allow some nitro vehicles to run on the track. So if you find yourself in that particular situation, I would reach out to your local track or your race director and see if these nitro trucks are going to be allowed to run at that particular facility. 
I'd hate for you to get one and then find out you can't race it at your local track because they don't allow nitro vehicles. But if you find yourself at an outdoor dirt track, mm, I'm sure these things will do just fine. Oh, man, so lots of cool stuff coming up with this truck. I already have some plans to do some really exciting stuff with this truck. I don't want to spoil all the details because they haven't been exactly hashed out completely just yet. But if they all come together, I think that you guys are really going to like what I have in store for future content with this truck. Hey everyone, real quick, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone that's been supporting me over on my Patreon. Everyone up on the screen right now, thank you all so much. You guys are seriously the best. And of course, I have to give a huge special shout out to my top tier supporters, starting with Mr. Brandon Helton, Tim Jeskiewicz, Robert Black, Brad Persons, and of course, Mr. Alex Johnson. Thank you guys all so much. I greatly appreciate it. Well, that's everything I have for today's video. I'm looking forward to all the future content with this truck. If you guys want to build one for yourself, all the links are down below with the parts that I used to put this bad boy together. If you want to check out all the links to get one of these conversion kits for yourself, they're down below in the description box, along with the link to my Patreon channel. If anyone out there wants to support the channel and everything we do here for the continued education and growth of RC, well, that's one way you can do that. Thanks everyone so much. I will catch you in the next one. Peace.